Good afternoon, Sphinx. What we want to do here this afternoon is continue on uh, in healing class. Tuesday is the day we teach on healing. And what I'm finding out that you have to keep telling people over and over and over that it is God's will for you to be healed. It hasn't sunk into people yet because they haven't heard it enough. And um, they haven't heard enough that sickness comes from the devil. They haven't heard them two things enough. And we, last week we was talking about um, healing is not always instant. <laughs> and we looked at uh, John the ninth chapter that man born blind what he had to do because when Jesus laid his hands on his eyes he told him to go and do something and it's the same way today when a person lays hands on you you need to go and do what Jesus is telling you to do and it all has to do with um, your prayer which we looked at last week too y'all remember that in Mark 11 chapter let me just refresh your mind because this is what I'm learning you can say things but people have selective hearing and no matter how many times you tell them they're going to keep asking you over and over in a different way and what I'm learning to do as a minister now is to keep telling them the same thing. That's what you said. Don't change it up at all. Just tell them the same thing. Now here in uh, Mark 11 chapter, it tells us in the 24th verse, it says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. That word receives, that means believe that you take them. Before you even get it. You have to believe that you have already taken it. Before it comes into manifestations in your life. And then he says something here which was very important. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. And that can turn into a big debate if you're arguing with somebody ignorant. But what I do, I just say, look, it, it's... God's word is simple. You don't have to use no fancy words or no Greek or Hebrew words or anything fancy, you know, to tickle people's ears. You make it plain. It, it makes it real plain when you stand praying, forgive. That means forgive anybody that you have odd against. Well, you don't know what they did to me. It don't matter what they did to you. You forgive them so that your Father in Heaven can forgive you your trespasses. And I, I really believe that that's a big part of getting healed is forgiving people. Mm -hmm. Forgiving your mother and father. Forgiving what happened with your ancestors. Because we like to go back to, you know, we were brought here from a non-continent, we, we were enslaved and all that. We have to get that out of our mind. Because if you set your mind on them things, you, you'll never get straightened out. You'll never get healed. Because you always got your mind set on the negative. Amen? And God told us to walk in love. That means unselfish love. That means not showing any distinction between one another. Right? right? You, yes. you gotta forgive people. Seventy times. And, and that's, that really starts in the house. You gotta forgive your 
wife or your husband if they've done something you've got to forgive their kids it's right. your kids if they've done something seven times seven Just you've got to keep forgiving them yeah. because the reason we keep going over healing because i realize that people haven't heard about healing this much because if they had heard about healing a lot more would be healed they be. They amen be sure. so what we want to do today is look at God's healing is spiritual. I know that to be a fact. Because there's no way in, on this earth that I made it out of what I made it out of without it being spiritual. It had to be some little angels running around in there and stuff, you know, and, and, and doing things. And you, you, people don't realize, you know, when, when something happens to you, you need to, first of all, examine yourself. Because like I said, my scripture was, you know, Psalm, Psalm 41, 4. Um, Lord, be merciful unto me and heal my soul, for I have sinned against you. And see, a lot of times that what that sin is in some people's life, they have unforgiveness. They're holding unforgiveness. Righteousness. Bitterness, hate, envy, jealousy, all of that. But like I said, today what we want to look at, God's healing is spiritual. And the second part of that, can be lost. Why do you say that? Can be lost. Because once you're healed, God heals you. And you know there's no way in, in, in the world that you made it through some operations or some car wrecks or some, you know, tragedy in your life and you got healed from it, that the devil starts putting these thoughts in your mind that you made it through this time, but the next time you're not going to make it. Right. He'll put the thoughts in your mind. And you know, when you start here feeling them funny pains in your arms or your chest or whatever, say, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you another heart attack, and this time you're not going to make it. You know, you have to fight the good fight of faith. And, and if you don't fight the good fight of faith, the healing that God has provided for you, you can lose it. You've got to hold on to it. I'm down. you got to hold on to it. Yeah, Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for all your goodness. We ask that you will guide and lead us through this Bible study by your Holy Spirit. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will open the eyes of the saints, their ears, and open their eyes so they can see. Because what we do, we you have taught us just to give your word, say what you say, and make it simple. And we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to expound on your word. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Now, Proverbs, the 20th chapter, the 27th verse reads, The spirit of a man is a lamp of the Lord, searching all the innermost depths of his heart. The spirit. See, our problem is, we don't know that we are a spirit, your being. Yeah, you see me right here in the flesh, you know, and I, I see you in the flesh. But there's more to us than that. We are a spiritual being. We possess a soul and live in this body. And see, that's one thing that helped me uh, grow up and understand God's word even more than what I do now. I'm still, you know, searching around for, you know, different things in the Word of God, but you know, when I find them, I give them to you. So we are a spirit, and this is how you communicate with God spiritually. You know, I know people like to howl and scream and prayers and all of that, which is, you know, all right. I mean, that's how they were brought up. But God is spiritual. That don't mean that just because you have a goosebumps or something like that or that that's God talking to you. 
what God does, he talks to your heart. Because the heart of you is actually your spirit. So spirit talks to spirit, right? So you communicate God in, in the spirit. And he's, he's made us this way. We're, we're part, we're made in the image of God. Amen. You know how God formed man out of the dust of the ground and man became a living being. He breathed into him the breath of life and he became a living being. That breath that he's talking about over there is he breathed into him some of his spirit into us. This is how we actually are living. It's the spirit that gives us life. Well, a lot of people like to say, well, you know, uh, I thought it was just our mind. No, it's not just your mind. It's your spirit that's giving you actually life. And this is why I say God's healing is spiritual. Because if you don't talk to God when something happens to you in Jesus' name, that prayer most likely is not going to get through. Because it's been taught us when we talk to the Father, we're supposed to talk to him, ask him stuff in Jesus' name. That's in the scripture. That's scripture. That's not what I'm saying. That's scripture. And, you know, a lot of times we don't have time to talk to the Father. We just call on the name of Jesus. Amen. That's what Peter did when he was sinking in that lake. That Jesus saved me. And he reached out his hand and saved him. But let's dig a little deeper in this. Now in Romans the 8th chapter. Because I, I, I this uh, second part of us, this soul part of us, is uh, really complicated. Amen to some people. But when you start looking at the word, it becomes really plain and simple. The, the soul part of you is your mind, your emotion. Amen? That's what that means. So here in Romans 8, chapter 6, verse, it tells us that those who live according to the flesh set their mind on the flesh. Well, let me, I didn't read that right. It says, those who live according to the flesh set their mind on the flesh, right? On the things of the flesh. Did I, I wonder if I wrote that. That does not no sound right. It, it is right in here. Are well, let me just check something because a lot of times when I'm writing this stuff so down, I, I don't, I miss something or I'll double copy over it or something. You know, I'm human, I can make mistakes. Oh, but it says that in here about the spirit of life. Uh, let's see here. The sixth verse it says, I mean, the, the fifth verse. Six to <coughs> See, I meant to write down the fifth verse. It says, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. So this mind part of us, which is our soul, the scripture is telling us that we can set it on things of the flesh, which is our body, amen, or we can set our mind on the spiritual things. Right? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, the Amplified just puts What, the fifth verse? First? Yeah, it makes it easy. What does it say? It Amplified? says, for those who are living according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, which gratify the body. Mm -hmm. But those who are willing, who are living according to the spirit, set their minds on things of the spirit, his will and his purpose. So it's the will and the purpose so, of God. A lot of people say, I can't control what I think. 
but you can control your mind. See, this is this is where people, you know, they want to, you know, say, well, you know, the mind has got all these different consciousness and all of this stuff. Let's keep it simple. Let's just say your mind. It's the mind of Christ. Mind. You know, your mind. You can set your mind on things of the flesh, the body, you know, all in that, or you can set your mind on things of the spirit. Right. And then it reads on, uh, for to be carly minded is death, right. but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. That's right. So when you set your mind on things of the spirit, it's life and, and peace. peace. Because it's of God. But when you set it on the flesh, it's death. Nothing but death. When you both now and forever. <laughs> are afflicted or going through some kind of sickness or something, that's when you need to set your mind on spiritual things. You need to check in with God and see what he says about it and you need, if you got any unconfessed sins, you need to confess your sins. And if you haven't forgiven somebody, you need to forgive them. What does that mean, forgive them? That means that in your heart, you forgive them, even though they're not there. Because, see, they may not know that you're holding unforgiveness against them. But you know that you're holding unforgiveness against them. And then jump on down to the 14th verse. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So, if you're not led by the Spirit of God, you're not a son of God. And you don't have to worry about it right now. But you need to get in Christ so that you can receive the Spirit as, a, uh, as the Holy Spirit as a gift. So you can be led by Him. Because it says in the 16th verse, the Spirit Himself bears witness that with our spirit that we are children of God. That's how you know that you're really saved if you haven't been saved. When you uh, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, that God did raise him from the dead, you are saved. When, when you start, uh, when you become saved, you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. That means that you become, your spirit becomes brand new. That old spirit that you had, which was of the devil right. is gone. Right. You have a new spirit. Right. So your spirit starts bearing witness with the Holy Spirit that you are a child of God. And then what you have to do, you have to get your mind together. Amen? Right. You have to get your mind together. But, Go ahead. Like you see, when you receive that spirit, that's how you get it together. Because that ninth verse says, um, the Spirit of God lives in you, directing and guiding you. But anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him, and he's not a child of God. You know, if God well, is see, the this is us, a, this is why I, I, I know that I have to keep going over this and keep going over this, because most Christians are carnal-minded. I know. They have their things set on things of the world. They they. Their, their mind is not on spiritual things. No. I mean, you can talk to them about spiritual things and they look like, look at you like you have lost your mind. Well, they will too. You're just a fanatic. Now, 1 Corinthians 2, 11 says, For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? So that's how you know right. by the spirit that is in you. Right. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. That's right. You know. So you, have, you, you don't change yourself by your own spirit. And you say that's 1 Corinthians. That's 1 Corinthians 2.11. And then uh, the Holy Spirit knows the things of God. He does. So when you set us. your mind on spirit, spiritual things, the Holy Spirit can lead and guide you into all truth. It's very simple. It's not a complicated process yeah. like some people like to make it to be. But here's the big problem why people make it so complicated. 
In 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, it says, Whose minds the God of this age has blinded. That's right. They blind. blind. Your minds have been blinded. Blind. Who do not believe. Yeah. Lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So if your mind is blinded, you won't set it on spiritual things because you don't believe. An unbeliever cannot set their mind on spiritual things. Yes, they can listen to them. They can listen to what you're saying. And what's happening, the, these, the devil is putting all these thoughts in their mind that you don't believe all that stuff, do you? You know, they don't even know what they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? So he blinds your minds. Now, in Ephesians 4, 17, it tells us something. It says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind. How does that read out of Amplified uh, Ephesians 4, 17? So this I say, and solemnly affirm together with the Lord, as in his presence, that you must no longer live as the unbelieving Gentiles live, mm -hmm. in the fertility of their minds, and in the foolishness and emptiness of their souls. That's See how that goes together? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mind and soul. Right. So if you're not setting your mind on spiritual things. It has to be on spiritual things. Mm -hmm. and you're walking in the futility of your mind and your empty soul. Right. They have their things. Their mind. So your so mind is like empty. Things. Yeah. Now, here's what you have to do. This, this, this is fixable. Once you become a child of God, all these things are fixable. You know what I mean? Because we at one time were walking the same way. Amen? Now Hebrews 4.12 tells us, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of the soul and spirit and of the John Meyer, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Oh, that word of God is strong, man. And it says, And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. That's true. You want your eyes open to whom you must give account. You That's know, so why do you need the word? Okay, let's break it on down. Psalm 107, verse 20 tells us that he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Go so with me to Psalm 107. Can I see 107? Yes, you see it, 107. Let's slow this down because you get excited when you hear God's word. So why did the psalmist say that? In verse 17, he says, Fools, because of their transgressions and because of their iniquities, were afflicted. A fool is somebody that don't know God. Right? So this is why a lot of people are afflicted because of their iniquities. Their soul abhors all manner of food, and they draw near to the gates of death. Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saves them out of their distress. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness 
and for his wonderful works to the children of men. When the Lord heals you, we need to give thanks to him. But how does he do it? He does it through his word. That's why I say, you know, we try to make this whole healing process complicated, but if you just say what God is saying, just stay in his word, it, it, it's really simple. Amen? You don't have to do anything. Because what, what it is, the word is our healer today. Mm -hmm. Is there faith and trust in the Lord? The word is our healer today. Yes. This is how you get healed through his word. I told you what my first was, Psalm 41.4. I meditated on that, and you know, if you read something in the Word, and even though you don't understand it, read it again, and then read the whole contents of where it came from, what chapter it came from, you still can't understand it, read the whole book. Amen? That's what you have to do. And, and you have to keep reading it, exactly. and keep talking to the Lord. And you know, if, if you are really a spiritual being, God is going to talk to you. The Holy Spirit is with you. He's in you. So he's talking to you. He's talking to you. Go with me to uh, John, the first chapter. Yes, that's what we would. Let's go to the book of John. Because it tells us uh, the Word is our healer today. John, the first chapter, the 14th verse says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. His word. The word became flesh. What do you mean? The word became flesh. That flesh was Jesus. Amen. Let's... let's uh, Read on down here, it says, uh, John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. The Word is our healer. Jesus is our healer today. He's the one that, the first thing that comes to my mind when, when I feel all these little pains in my body or my chest or my arm may feel like it's trying to go to sleep and the devil's trying to put them thoughts in my mind that you're getting ready to have another heart attack or something like that. I, I say Jesus. 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 And what he'll tell me, like he tells everybody, that you're healed. But you got to hold on to it. You got to fight the good fight of faith. Now, in uh, John the fourth chapter, the twenty fourth verse, it says, "God is a God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth." So, when you come to God, you got to come to Him in spirit and in truth, because He knows you. We read in Hebrews that He, he ain't nothing hid from Him. You know, he knows you. And then in John 6, 63, it says, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. That's why I say the Word is our healer today. Yes. Then in, uh, you go to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, the seventh verse says, but to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Amen? We all got that grace. Now, in Hebrews, that fourth chapter, if you jump down to uh, the 11th verse,
Can you see how healing is spiritual, children? Is it coming together for you? Well, if not, we're going to go over it again. No, it is spiritual. He goes right in us and take care of everything. When that word gets in you, that's what starts to heal you. Right, it does. You don't need no medication. You don't need no knife or nothing. God's healing is spiritual. Instantaneous. Now, when you, uh, this fourth chapter here, jump down to the 11th verse. It says, uh, He himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. That's what we're here for, to edify you and tell you the truth and build you up. You must be like Jesus. I said Ephesians, the fourth chapter, you jump down to the 11th verse. You say Hebrews. You know, I, I was talking about Hebrews. You know, that's right. what it says. Yeah, that's right. But I, I was in Ephesians. I read 4 7. Now jump down to verse. Now I just read verse 11 and 12. Yeah, I see. And see, these are the off, these are the five offices that he Jesus himself gave us: apostles, prophets, evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints. And then it says in verse thirteen, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the statutes of the fullness of Christ that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every whim of doctrine, doctrine by the trickery of men and the coming craftiness and deceitful plotting. But speak the truth in love, may grow up in all things unto into him who is the head Christ from whom the whole body joints and knitted together by what every joint supplies according to the effectual working by which every part does its share causing growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So that's what we're doing over here tonight. We're telling you that God's healing is spiritual. It's because of his word. His word is the healer today. Jesus is the healer. Amen? But it's, it tells us a lot about that we have to have faith. Right? Amen. Practically all the way through this. this. See, this is just not something that you can just read and say, okay, I understand that in my mind. What you have to do is set your mind on spiritual things. You can't set your mind on the flesh and the body, the world, carnal things. That's not going to help you get healed. You know what I mean? You can't say that you're a child of God and you don't believe that it is God's will for you to be healed. And then you are saying, when is this doctor going to heal me? Right? You can't be saying that. But the thing with these people have to have faith to even read the scripture. Because you have to believe the Well, it takes faith to even you be saved. To, you have, right. And you have to, when you read in this word, you can't be dissecting and keeping what you want to Well, see, this is what I you noticed uh, that you what people all. do. Not some of it, but all. It's by the trickery of men. And cunning craftiness of deceitful plot. Well, how does that 14th verse read out every It's a little different. It says, so that we are no longer children spiritually immature. Okay. Tossed back and forth like ships on a stormy sea. Mm -hmm. And carried about by every wind of shifting doctrine. Mm -hmm. By the cunning and trickery and the unscrupulous men 
mm -hmm. by deceitful scheming of people ready to do anything for personal profit, you know, for money. This is a problem in the church. Yes, yeah, it's the business. But it's not God's business. This is why <laughs> they use words to tickle your ears. And they can explain away any scripture. Um, I was just listening to the History Channel today. Before I came over there, they was talking about how the children of Israel had came out of Egypt. And they wanted to explain away all the miracles and the opening of the Red Sea by some phenomena. Who say can't explain happened on earth from that time. I said, this ain't nothing but some junk. Right. But then, like that 15th speech, what God really puts in us all the time is about his love. He said, but speaking the truth and love and all things, both Amen. our speech Amen. and our lives expressing his truth. Let us grow up together. Let us grow up in all things and following his example, who is the head of Christ. He's rich. Right. You got to do everything in love. Now, you got to have faith for all this work. The scripture says, have faith in God. That's right. Continually. You got Not to have faith. faith in God. Not sometimes. That's sometimes. why when I read you what it said in Mark 11 24, you got to have faith. And that's what you're saying. You're fighting a good. Uh, Fight of faith. Every right. time you feel that Satan trying to bring some tingling or make you feel bad, you, 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 you fight with faith. You, you right. know God loves you. You know he heals you. You know he's going to protect you because he's your good shepherd. Mm -hmm. And you shall not want. Right. And he healed your body. So you had to be speaking all these things to yourself, his word. Mm -hmm. And Satan, he'd be angry because he know you're not blinded. Mm -hmm. That your eyes are open. He be trying to make your eyes get closed with fear. Right. There's no fear in God. It's true. No, there's not. No fear. There's no fear That's what he's trying all. to use on us. Well, he wants to do that. Try and make us angry. Make us uh, he think we owe to, him something. He wants to put doubt. Right. He make us think. See, this, uh, see, a lot of people, when I say that, they say, well, where is that in the Bible? Second Timothy, the sixth chapter. Right. The 12th verse says, fight the good fight of faith. We have to. Lay hold on eternal life. That means that you got to hold fast to your healing. You got to lay hold on it. You got to fight the good fight of faith. Faith is an act. Right. That means that you're doing something. If I didn't believe I was healed, I wouldn't be out here running you around. You need teacher right now. You say, I got a rest. Right. I mean, my pressure goes This up. is what a lot of people do when they uh, go through a heart attack or something like that. They want to not do anything anymore because they got fear. You see ministers doing that. They what have you fear. Know, you know, they feel a little something in their chest or their arm will feel a little numb. And, and they get fear. They do. In their, in their heart. And, and right away, they. this is why I say it's so important to know where healing, healing is spiritual and can be lost. And when, when this fear gets on you and you let it take you over you, it before long, you have lost your healing. Be weak, your mind be feeble. You will only be weak by you not up moving around and exercising. You get so that you can't move. Right, can't even think. You'd be on a walker. Shaking their turn. You'd be in a wheelchair. Be nervous. Don't have no peace. Faith is an act. That means that you got to do Ooh, something. Whatever action. you were Tell doing, the you do that and only you do it even more. You do it even more. This is what is this is what this um heart attack has done for me. It's making me tell you the truth even more. It's right. making That's me right. study That's even right. more. It's making me uh really make it as simple to you. I'm not trying to use no fancy words because what it is, is, is it, it's a demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. That's what you need is the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. You need to set your mind on spiritual things. Amen. And you, you're saying just what I just said in that 15 verse. 
but speaking the truth. That's what you're doing in love. You tell the truth. Using yourself for an example. I'm not going to stand up here and try to act like some theologian professor and give you all the Greek and Hebrew terms and what Dr. So-and-so wrote in his book and what this doctor wrote in his book and what that doctor. I'm telling you what I know. Right. And what I believe and what I have faith in is faith in God. And, he's and I know that Jesus Christ is my healer. He's your head. And, I, and I'm, I'm, mm. I know that faith is in that. Go with, you, go with me to James, the second chapter. We need story. to get this really down in our spirit before we leave here tonight. James. That faith is an act. If you believe right. what I'm saying here, that the healer, the word is your healer today, you need to put it in action. Right, that's what he was saying. In you action. need to go through these scriptures that I have given you and, and put them to work in your life. And pray over it. And get busy. Amen. The first one that you need to stop by is uh, Mark 11, 24 <laughs> through right. 26. And, and, get, and get, yeah. get, get your heart right with everybody. That's right. Get your all your sins forgiven. Yeah. Get born again. Yeah. Now, James, the second chapter... The 14th verse says, What does it profit, my brother, if someone says he has faith but does not have no works? That's right. Can faith save him? It just will not without the works. If I'm saying I'm saved and I believe that I'm healed, I'm, I need to be out here telling y'all that you can be saved and you can be healed too. And demonstrated by what I'm doing. That's right. And it says in the 17th verse, <laughs> Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. So if you don't have no works, but your faith is dead. It is. It says ineffective and inoperative. Now the 21st says, mm -hmm. But do you want to know, O foolish man? You know which one, the foolish man I'm talking to, the unbeliever. That's right. It's that it's faith without works is dead. Yeah, useless. And then in the 26th verse it says, for the body without the spirit is dead. Amen. If you don't have the spirit in you, you're dead. If you don't have the spirit of God in you, you're dead. It's walking you're like the dead. walking dead. Right. For the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. That's right. No obedience. Now, in a book, Christ the Healer by F.F. F. Bosworth, there's a quote that I'm taking out of there. It says, faith begins where the will of God is known. Do you really know that it is God's will for you to be healed? It certainly is. And that sickness comes from the devil? And that sometimes it's not always instant. Amen. That's why I see it. And that you have to pray. That's right, you do. And that it can be lost. First Peter 2.24, this one verse here, if you meditate on this one verse, this enough anointing in just this one verse to save you and for you to get healed too. If you, if you can really put all your faith and trust in God. Amen. Hebrews 2.24 says, Who himself, that's Christ, bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Not going to be healed. You've already You're been already healed. healed. How does it read out after five? The 24th verse. Yeah. He personally carried our sins in his body on the cross, willingly offering himself on it as on an altar of sacrifice so that we might die to sin, becoming immune from the penalty and the power of sin, and to live for righteousness for his wounds. You who believe have been healed. Now, I want you to know, children, that no one will be able to maintain their healing for long without a faith of their own in God. Amen. 
Amen. You got to have a faith of your own in God, not somebody else's faith. You got to have faith, right. and you got to hold fast. Like in Revelation uh, two twenty five, it says, "Hold fast what you have till I come." You got to hold on to it. You got to hold on to this healing. And then Revelation three eleven says, "Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that." No one may take your crown. That's right. Because if you don't hold on to your healing, it can be lost.